Well, I'm Jake Jackson. I've worked at Air Studios for 13 and a half years, started here as a runner, and uh, slowly but surely worked my way up, working lots and lots of hours with lots of amazing people, or generally on film scores and that kind of thing, in the main, in the main hall here at Air. And um, about uh, two and a bit years ago, I went to uh, freelance. And of course, you won uh, the Breakthrough Engineer of the Year at the MPG. How would you describe that as a sort of, as a thing? As a thing, it was it was amazing. It, it was you know I, I remember I got a call from from somebody saying I've been nominated and I needed to put some things together to, for the for the for the CV so to speak, and uh, it was of course very exciting. I was probably, didn't know sort of know who nominated me, but it was very very nice of them. Yeah. And then um, I kind of started thinking about it and thinking, wow, you know this is this is this is big. It could be really big, and it's a important thing and the MPG is great now that I'm now that I've won it I'm kind of more of a member and, it's, mm. and it makes a lot more sense to me and it's really it's a great organization 2010 was a was a breakthrough year for me because I had only been freelance for a few months yeah. and um and I did a few you know really big projects and, yeah. and for me it felt like a breakthrough because it was I was I, I had you know I'd kind of grown my wings I suppose and had, mm. and had, had gone through that barrier of being Known as an assistant and being the assistant at Air Studios, yeah. not the assistant, but one of the one of the really you know experienced assistants at Air Studios, to being you know to being a fully fledged engineer, yeah. and, and um, it's great to have that recognised as well. So, do you have some kind of favourite projects that you've worked on, or maybe not, not necessarily even the ones in the last year, but no, absolutely. Key... Well, I mean, the ones that stand out for me, the ones that get talked about, are the first big was a proposition with Nick Cave because mm. that was that was a big thing because although it's a film score, it still had its roots in rock music with Nick and Warren, you know, mm. who are very rocky. And that th their way of working was different to any other film I'd ever worked on. So that was great. And my input was really important. And sounds played a big key, not just, you know, in terms of the way we produced the sounds, the way we recorded the sounds. And, yeah. and um, his style has been kind of imitated since, and it's become a big, big thing. And that's what people still, still to come up to me now and say, you know, you did the music on the proposition. I love that music. I love that film. And so that that was for me was my yeah. kind of the big thing. I mean, obviously other things like um, when I, we did the music for Sweeney Todd and we did a, recorded the orchestra. I was I recorded all the songs for that. Mm. And um, Stephen Sondheim was in the room, and, and it was conducted yeah. by Paul Jimajani and and uh, Jonathan Tudyk was there as well. And so the whole team, the original Sweeney Todd was there, and we were recording it in the in the main hall in Air the yeah. Hall. And the orchestra, because Paul Jim and Johnny knew it so well, there was no headphones because it was no. It wasn't a picture at that point. It was before the picture had even been filmed, and so it was all about the music. And right. the, the the movie really blossomed. The fact that it was all about the music for those bits. If you can distill it into sort of a simple thing, do yeah. you have a general approach? Is there, yeah. is there something that you would say is your signature or? I, 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 I. We were discussing this last night actually at the end of the project, the last project I was doing, and. I like to make it sound amazing, but keep it simple. Right. Make it, so make it, you know, make the musicians perform their best they can in that, in the environment. So try and, when I'm producing, try and make it constructive and fun and, and not try and take it, you know, too seriously, you mm. know, that, but then make sure that I'm capturing the music with the best possible microphones and the best possible equipment, but not to take it to that level where it gets too complicated so that, People, are, the musicians are waiting. It's more, you know, what they produce is the important thing. Mm. So, if they're having to hang around while I fiddle around with a mic position for two or three minutes or whatever in the midst of a big, big project, and you lose that moment, then that's worse than, how, you know, that's much worse than, yeah. you know, than, than try and make it too complicated and, and try and make myself look good. Yeah, I make myself look good by not looking good, so to speak. Do you <laughs> by, know what I mean? By, by, by being just, invisible. By being invisible. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Do you uh, do you remember your kind of first impressions? What were your what were your first impressions of these? Well, speakers? I remember as uh, Steve, your the, the sales guy, came came round and brought the set of speakers in. I was in the midst of doing something else, and we took some time out for lunch time. And um, I was like, okay, let's you know, let's have a listen. He said, brought them up his demo demo pair, and we put them up in Studio One, where I spent a lot of time mixing Doctor mm. Who and things like that. And um, I was um, I wasn't prepared. To, for how good they were, it was. We put them up and we played something, and I was like, "Okay, these sound good like this." Okay, so I went to a completely different opposite genre of something else I worked on. It's like, "Okay, these sound great as well. <laughs> this sounds great." And I went through about ten or twelve different things that I've recorded and mixed, looking to find something that I didn't like about the speakers, and I couldn't find anything I didn't like about them. It was it was lovely because it was, 
it was all my different mixes across all different genres of slightly different genres of film score that we do all just just they just sounded great mm. it was a I was kind of I always couldn't believe my ears really I do quite a lot of mixing at people's home studios yeah and um where, where I can I take them with me and and set them up because I've got the GLM software and yeah I can, yeah I can take it to a room and and then know that what I've got coming out at me is you know what I'm expecting to hear a lot of the mixing I do is is a lot of mixing in a day mate if it's for a TV show it'll be an episode or every day or every one and a half days or two days yeah I've got to mix 20 25 minutes 30 minutes of music in a day so I've got to trust what I'm hearing how you find the, the calibration process as well I mean is that is that tricky for you or is no it, no no it's great it takes you've got the, the software and stuff I guess on a laptop yeah on my laptop so yeah. that, that goes everywhere with me anyway so that's very yeah. simple and uh, yeah no absolutely when I take when I when I take the the, uh, the bag of speakers I've chuck the calibration software with me the, the the box and everything with me and the microphone and yeah yeah it takes two minutes and it's, it's done, done perfect basically. and that's that's it you know it's great for my job it's my kind of kudos is all about making it easy for myself making it easy for my clients making it easy for the for, the, for everybody in the process you know mm. using my skills as a kind of balance engineer rather than as a really techie engineer so i want things that can make that job easier these speakers do that for me yeah they you know they they work they they just they represent everything that I can hear. I want. I want to hear, and um, I can trust them with any genre of music, whether it's pop music or, or film music or orchestral music, whatever. Yeah, your current project is is a very big one. Um, yeah. Can you tell us more about what you're well, what you're working on? We we are myself and um, I'm working for the composer and arranger Philip Shepherd, and we are um, recording and mixing all two hundred and five or six uh, national anthems for the Olympic Games in two thousand and twelve. Okay. So it's a bit of a mammoth project. Uh, we were recording the orchestra, the London Philharmonic Orchestra. At Abbey Road Studio Two, and um, that was required six days, six very long days of recording. Right, um, two hundred. Yeah, in, in, we, record, right. we recorded two hundred, an- two hundred and one anthems, because some of them are used uh, by a couple of the same countries. Yeah, um, and um, yeah, so we've been recording that at Abbey Road, and then we're mixing it here back at Air in Studio Three. Yeah, and um, it's a bit of a mammoth task, really. That is, and um, to put it mildly, a mammoth yeah. task. And um, I love the BMWs down at Abbey Road, but I also wanted to have another set of speakers that was that was we used all the way through the project, so that mm. Philip knew what they were like. And um, and the BMWs almost got a bit, bit too good, really. They they you know they they just down them. Anything sounds absolutely incredible okay, for them. Yeah. So so it was nice to have you know have these speakers which I knew and trust, and uh, to have down there and um, you know have portable and to stick them in a cab at the end of the day and they yeah. go back to air and I'm here in the morning to set them up and again I, and again I can tune it to the room and Abbey Road 2 is a funny one with that big glass window by the side yeah, of me so yeah. there's a funny reflection from that so it's nice to have these that just kind of just temper tem- that a little yeah, bit just temper it and um, yeah to have a set of speakers you know and trust in a studio that's there's a great studio but yeah. it's still nice to have that because again you're straight you're straight running you know with, with this project 201 cues in 51 hours you don't get you don't get much chance to, to have a second go if you yeah. if you we finished with, I think maybe you know a few minutes spare in the entire process, and if it had been if we taken I had to take a minute longer on every single cue, every single anthem, yeah, then we wouldn't have got finished. We would have got, it would have been three or four hours worth of overtime. So, so it had to be it had to trust it and know that what you were listening to was was correct and and uh, they were perfect for it. It's a tiring tiring thing listening yeah. to national anthems all day long because it's not like a bit of music that goes quiet in the middle. It's it's full designed on. to be full on. Exactly, it's it's, it is full on. It's full on, and it's blurry and it's loud. And um, yeah, yeah, mate, I, I'm, my ears are tired, but they're not, <laughs> but they're not hurting in a day. And that's the that's important. very good as well. Yeah, and that's a yeah, that's a very telling sign, I think, and yeah. a good one. Yeah, fantastic. Cool. Well, good luck with that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I don't. I do not envy the amount yeah. of work involved in doing something to that extent. Yeah, but no, it's it's pretty mad actually. We were. Yeah, it's it's pretty mad. It's you know, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of like preparation, mm. uh, but on particularly on Phil's part, but not yeah. so much on mine. But yeah. just to know, we had to get the guys at Abbey Road really, you know, clued up, and you know, we had to get prepared every before, every every morning because again, you any minute you lost a minute, you no, any minute lost the Pro Tools was a nightmare. Yeah, and the guys there, guy Gordon Davison, who worked down at Abbey Road, was amazing, mm. and. Um, it was just it was a, you know it had to be it had to it had to run like clockwork because yeah. if it didn't you know you were screwed you stuffed yeah. stuff, <laughs> stuff screwed whatever anything like that so yeah crazy crazy fantastic yeah